Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest in this series of podcasts with myself, Liam Carroll, a qualified financial advisor with SYS Wealth and Financial Planners. And the idea behind these podcasts is to give help to your wealth. And within that, we talk to experienced professionals who will give you extremely valuable nuggets of advice to help you personally and your business as well. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by a good friend of mine, Kieran Griffin. And I'll give you a brief outline on Kieran. Kieran is the founder of AdSuite, an online advertising agency that helps businesses all across the globe to generate new leads and increase online sales through Facebook and Google Ads. He's from Kerry and graduated from Limerick with a business uh, studies degree and majoring in marketing. And his client portfolio ranges from service-based businesses and consultants to e-commerce stores to retail outlets, gyms, manufacturers, educators, and an awful lot more as well. And delighted and well-deserved, Kieran recently received the Business All-Star Accreditation from the, All- from the All-Ireland Business Foundation as Rising Star in Digital Advertising. Kieran, thanks very much for joining us today. Thanks very much, Liam. Happy to be here. And I, I'm delighted to have that last line out of the way anyway. It nearly uh, took, it took my breath away, but anyway. <laughs> it's a bit twister, all right, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit twister. Um, Kieran, thanks again for joining us today. And first question, I suppose, that um, we ask everybody really that comes onto the podcast is, Professionally and personally, I suppose, taken in two stages, how has the COVID affected you? Yeah, so I suppose, um, like everyone else, uh, personally, at the start of at the start of it, like I, I obviously I, I was um, I was just starting out with my business. I was probably a year into the business when it when it all kicked off, and I had got I had grounded my feet, and I suppose I had a lot of travel plans because I was hoping to work online. So personally. I suppose it affected my travel plans from yeah. being a digital nomad, going across the world, going to new countries and stuff like that. And also, I suppose friends and family is the other main thing. You know, you're, you 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 couldn't meet up with your friends anymore. You couldn't socialize. You can you couldn't go out for a drink. You couldn't go into any, any games, sports, uh, going to the gym. All that kind of stuff affects you personally. Um, and even with family, like you know, I suppose my grandmother lives right beside my house and even at that you couldn't go into the house for you know sit down for a cup of tea or say hi or have the chats like you normally would you know so personally I suppose they were the biggest effects I felt and uh, professionally I suppose like I said I was a year into the, into the business um, I started in April 2019 and the first lockdown kicked off mid-March 2020 and that that February the month before it all kicked off was my best month so far. And um, 70% of my clients or my revenue was cut mid-March overnight. Like everyone else, you know, I suppose I didn't even feel the impact too much because I was just start, starting out. I know overheads and so on. But it's a big, you know, it, it really does kind of crush your, I suppose, your motivation, you know, after a year of hard work. Um, but in saying that, how COVID has affected me, that was, a, that was a downfall. But like everything, there's ups and downs. And coming out towards it at the end of summer, when businesses were reopening, some services were deemed essential, their business could get back up and running and they needed my service. And also a lot of businesses were going online and selling online. That's where I came into play. And from then on, it was nearly a snowball. So from going from being absolutely crushed to my client revenue being cut by 70% from July on, business started booming so on top of having a big down there was a huge up so I suppose that is a big way that that COVID affected me professionally. Gini Kieran I think the first part of the story you said there is is common to an awful lot of people I think we've all felt your pain there but the second part is it's fascinating like because um, to be able to bounce back from having that deep it shows great resilience Kieran in a, in a young man to be fair about it and uh, you, I suppose you have to get the, the courage to, to drive on again. That's exactly it. Like I suppose I was kind of, so I, I don't know how, how to describe, but I suppose I just had tunnel vision. I knew that, I knew what was going to happen because I knew that e-commerce, online, virtual, for, I was already doing online meetings, whereas most people were doing face-to-face ones. So I was kind of used to that world and I knew that it was going that way anyway. Yeah. COVID just accelerated it. And I kind of had that in the back of, back of my mind to keep driving forward that this was going to happen. This is only going to work in my favor. All I need to do is keep my tunnel vision, keep positive, keep going. Yeah, and yeah. I suppose what really stood to me in that period of that, that big dip was 
being kind and helping people. And there was a, there was this campaign, it was a one a day initiative that I joined. And on top of that, just helping out other people free of charge, providing value, that really stood to me. So I kind of, I think I recognize that in that, right, if I say, right, I'll build a good name here, I'll do good for other people. When it comes out of it, when the time's right, that will come back and work in my favor. It'll be good karma for me. And I think that's what happened. So, yeah. And it's very clever, Kieran, because as you said, you didn't have massive overhead, so you were in a fortunate position to be able to do it. But it showed brilliant, I think, business acumen to be able to do it. But um, it's funny, I am a story about you that um, basically I, I know you, I'd say the bones of a year and a half, two years at this stage. And yeah. I had a problem with my shoulder. And I remember going into Paddy Ivers, you know, Paddy, a mutual friend of ours inside. And I, I was inside and he put me through the ringer with his elbow and the whole lot. And uh, as Paddy does, Kieran, as you well know. Yeah. And um, I said, Jimmy. Paddy, every time I turn on the computer, your, your face is stuck all over. And I said, how's that? And he said, you need to ring um, Kieran Griffin. Uh, there's his number. He's below and Kerry. This man <laughs> is a genius on, on all Facebook ads and things. And uh, I remember then I, I rang you and you said you were based below on Killarney side down there. And uh, my first thought that came into my head was, um, right, if he's based there and I'm based in Limerick, uh, we'll meet him in Listowel or something. That was the way my brain was, was thinking. And I said, well, we meet in this the wall, Kieran. And, oh, no, no, we'll do all that online. That'll be all done by Zoom calls and other similar means. And I think from my point of view, Kieran, sorry not for hogging this a small bit, but okay. from my point of view, it totally changed my way of thinking because I think you you were in the Zoom space before the rest of us. And I said to myself, like, that, if he's able to do that with that business, surely there's a way that I can change my business to do something similar. Like, So you were ahead of the curve from that point of view as well, Kieran. Exactly. And I suppose, look, I, I kind of, I, I didn't jump into it making the right decision at all. I spent six months from the day I started my business getting that green bus from Clarny or Chile up to Dublin, <laughs> ringing businesses and getting that, that bus five or six hours on hot summer days. And I said, I couldn't do this anymore. I wasn't making money and I was spending money on lunches up in Dublin and buses up and down. I said, how can I make this better? And I, I, I suggested doing a phone, a video phone call with one uh, dental clinic in Dundrum I think they were based no problem at all I said why haven't I been doing this the whole time you know why is, is no one else doing this so from then on I just did it and everyone was fine with it and then like, like yourself all you need to do you don't even need to have a lot of tech skills you click a link and you join and there you are face to face talking to another person so it's brilliant it's funny like because I ideally I consider you a friend at this stage as well as everything else and we've never actually met it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> we said that two years ago, like you said, like to never, I don't know what hide you are renting here, but uh, <laughs> Crazy, yeah, I know, yeah, we've, we've only seen each other from the waist up, and, and I suppose not even in the flesh, but hopefully that day will come, Liam. Hopefully that day will come, we'll have a pint, a beverage somewhere, exactly. Yeah. Um, I suppose you've extreme background, an excellent background in the whole area of uh, Facebook and social media, but a nugget that you could give, a nugget of advice, or something that's totally underused, in your opinion, that you could give to people, Kieran, a bit of advice. Yeah, so I suppose um, a bit of advice. There's a few things. There's a few things here. So a, a bit of advice uh, for people is that a lot of people li like with what we're saying at the moment with with online meetings and stuff and 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 selling online. I think although that has boomed in in the past year, not everyone is still utilizing it. I think a lot of people are still sticking to their local area in terms of providing a service. They're not thinking outside or, 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 or expanding their goals you know I see a lot of people and or I'm talking to like let's say potential clients and I ask them what who, like where's your target market and it's still their local town I'm saying you can provide this service online so I suppose my nugget information or my advice is go beyond that reach niche go nationwide go international if you can go overseas the world is at our fingertips um, at this moment in time even if you're selling selling online you don't just have to sell to your to your local uh, town or, or area. You can sell all over the country. And I suppose the second part of that question, um, stuff that's underused or, or unknown in my industry, there's a load and load of tools that business owners or, or people in general can use for free or for very low cost. And I suppose some of some of the free ones and this is because so many people are starting to realize they need to advertise their business or service online if you see your competitor's ad on facebook or social media or instagram or wherever that is or if you see another company that you like and you're wondering i wonder 
follow their ads they're, they're, they're running, or you wonder what competitor, what ads your competitor is running. There's a free tool called Facebook Ads Library. And you go into that and you type in their Facebook page name and it will pull up all the ads that your competitor or that company that you like are running. So that's a really good way for a, a, or an underused tool that many business owners don't realize that you can do. You can literally see what ads your competitors are running. And you can say, right, this is what they're offering. This is the, the, the landing page or this is the website that they're sending them to. And you can say, right, how can I do that better? How can I better deliver for, for my customer more than my competitor? So that's, that's one free tool that a person can use that's completely yeah. unknown to, to most people. A second one is a, a free tool. Now you are limited in, in I suppose, the amount of, of, of resources in it that you can use for the free version. It's called SpyFu, so S-P-Y-F-U. And this is the tool whereby you put in your competitor's domain, so their, their website address, and you can see the Google ads that they're running and what keywords they're bidding on. So again, it's another way of gaining insight into your competitor's advertising campaigns and their marketing strategy. Um, other than that, if you are if you are just after building a website and you're doing SEO, which a lot of businesses because of all the local enterprise grants, there's so many new websites up and running at the moment. And if you have a business and you want to, if you want to understand what trends there is going on at the moment, what keywords I should be optimizing for, there's a tool. If you create a Google ad account, there's a tool called Google Keyword Planner. And you put in, let's say, for instance, you provide financial services. You put in the word financial services and it will give you a list of other words, the volume of searches per month for that and how competitive uh, those keywords are. It will give you a list of other searches similar to financial services that people are looking for. So it might be financial advisor near me. It might be how to take out a pension in Ireland. It could be anything. And that will give you an insight into what words or content you need to be putting out into your website. And the last one, this is number four, is a really, really good, and it's probably my most used uh, software um, at the moment. It's, it's really cheap. It's called Canva. And this gives you unreal, whether it's for a presentation, a CV, um, an ad, an Instagram or Facebook post, they have thousands of templates that a person can just plug and play, change the text, put in their branding, put in their brand colors, put in their logo, and boom, you have world-class presentation CV or social media posts. It's unreal. And uh, very good. I'll have to look that one up after this interview, Kieran. anyway. Yeah, no, thank you very much. That's Brilliant. excellent, uh, excellent advice. And I suppose you're nearly out of, you're nearly out of trouble now. We've only two questions left, um, Kieran. The, the second last question. In your experience, and what are we, I suppose, the most advantageous or the, the financial product that you would recommend the most in your experience of um, yeah, I suppose I only use, I have two, I use two main financial products, um, for my, I have one for my invoicing system and then I have one to pro process my, my payments and that's Stripe. And I think most people would use either Stripe or PayPal, but I think one thing that has been an absolute lifesaver and just a gem for me in my business is my invoicing, uh, tool, which is called simpleinvoices.io. And I think it's $9.99 a month, and that's dollars, so it's probably cheaper in euro. And instead of sending a client an invoice every month, whereby they have to go, go then and either send it to their account steam or do a bank transfer with my IBAN and so on, and it's time for them and it's time for me. Simple invoices. If you are providing a monthly service, or even this is for anyone, if you're providing a once-off service and you want to send off one invoice, but primarily for monthly services whereby you kind of have a subscription-based model and that you're billing the client the same amount each month. With simple invoices, the reason it's so good is because you set up your client in it, you set up the date of each month that you want to bill that client, and once the client pays the very first invoice with their card, it bills them automatically for every, let's say, for instance, it's the 3rd of June, they'll bill them for the 3rd of July, 3rd of August, and, and so on. So it saves so much time. It's all automated. You get your reports for each month and year on how much you've invoiced and how much you've received. And also, you don't just have to just charge them using their card. Let's say, for instance, they pay you in cash or they do a bank transfer. You can still create that invoice in simple invoices. 
and mark it as a cash payment and it'll still go into your system and uh, all your data remains consistent. So that's that's a, a really, really good tool that people can use. Yeah. Um, best bit of advice you ever got, be it from a parent, a work colleague, lecturer, whatever it may be, Kieran, best bit of advice you ever got? Yeah, I, I thought about this question and uh, <laughs> it, it, it's it's tough because there's, I hope, so party, I hope you can get uh, the best bit of advice you got with some party Ivers now, because it could be, uh, it might be PG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't go into what anything that Paulie says, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I suppose I've gotten advice from so many people like so far. I mean, I, I'm still, you know, young and, and new and stuff and, you know, advice is fine <laughs> in any direction, but uh, the main pieces of advice I can think of are, I suppose, one, be focused and specialized in one area. I think I've had so much temptation to go down other routes and offer other services in digital marketing, such as web design, SEO, social media content, and so on. And I think the reason I've succeeded in just two short years is because I've remained focused with one thing, and that's being good and the best at advertising. Um, I think that's one of the, the best pieces of advice to, to remain focused uh, in, in your special area. I think the, the second um, piece of advice would be to celebrate the small wins. You know, I think, and this was actually brought up on, on, on the Business All-Star Ceremony the other day. Irish people are not good at celebrating themselves. You know, they, they, they might win a client, they might have a good meeting, they might come over some milestone, whatever it is, and they'll just plow on and do their job and put the head back down. They won't recognize what they've achieved and look back on it and reflect and, and pat themselves on the back. So yeah, yeah. celebrate the small wins is a really, really important one. It really gives you a sense of achievement and fulfillment of what you're doing. And I think they're kind of the, the two main pieces of advice. I suppose this is completely going beyond the, the question of the best piece of advice. But the third one is, um, the third one is, if you want to do something, you'll never regret trying it, but you'll always regret not trying it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hind hindsight is a great gift, isn't it? Yeah. 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 No, no, they're, they're fantastic piece of advice. Uh, you must have had a lot of good lecturers or people you worked with because they're uh, they're top notch stuff anyway. In fairness, so well done. That's and it, a member well, of uh, Midwest Mentoring as well, and um, I know it would be remiss if we didn't mention, but John Loftus sings your praises on weekly basis i think anyway so um he uses your campaigns as well i think anyway so yeah. um that's fantastic as well kieran i needn't say it, but that you're on you're available to meet people on zoom and other similar platforms anyway so i would highly recommend if anybody has any questions on facebook advertising google advertising that kieran is the man to talk to um that was very interesting in, um interview i learned bits about you i didn't know and uh, thank you very much for that um, right. Kieran, thanks very much for taking the time to join us today. No uh, problem. It was an absolute pleasure. And thanks everybody for listening. And Kieran's details are at the start of the podcast and are also going to be at the end of the podcast. So, Kieran, thank you very much for taking the time. Cheers, Liam.